Hey, Ecryptizens. Tonight's stories are Vitalik says Canada's use of banks to stifle protesters is dangerous. Phishing attack causes grief for open sea. The date is February 20, 2022, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for the podcast is Tex, and together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We bring you new stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. If you're new here and you find that you like this show, subscribe and rate us. If you're on Spotify, you can do that right from the app. So give Tex and I five stars. It'll help other people find their way to this podcast. Now we've got a lot to talk about, so let's go. What the heck is going on with the market? I mean, look at Bitcoin. 60% of all Bitcoin in existence hasn't moved for over a year. That's right. 60% of Bitcoin isn't for sale. It's being hodled. Then there's bipartisan support for crypto, at least in the Senate. Senators Ron Wyden from Oregon and Cynthia Lummis from Wyoming and Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania, that's one Democrat and two Republicans, they are looking to make sure that a crypto tax reporting provision in the U.S. infrastructure bill does not apply to miners. I feel like there's some other influence or some other force kind of artificially holding the price of Bitcoin down. Like they're waiting for something. And then in that moment, it's going to explode. So I'm actually kind of chill with the idea of a longer crypto winner. I mean, that way I can load up even more before the inevitable rush of mass adoption. And we've got OpenSea back in the news, but it's not because OpenSea did anything wrong, not by any means. They're just looking out for their customers. And now before we jump into the stories, let's take a quick look at the markets. The global market cap is $1.8 trillion. That's down 0.83%. At the time of writing, the top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 1.93%, Ethereum up, 0.14%, 0.14%, Tether, Binance Coin down 0.08%, and USDC. The top five NFT collections by 24 hour volume on OpenSea are MFers up 176%, Tales of Suki Genesis, this is their first day, so they're even up on the day, Doogie is up 60%, Azuki down 17%, and CryptoPunks up 78%. Now, keep in mind, Some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Vitalik Buterin says Canada's use of banks to style protesters is dangerous. Buterin spoke on the subject of the Freedom Convoy, Trudeau, and its use of financial force against dissent. Buterin also said that Trudeau and the Canadian government has really demonstrated just why cryptocurrencies exist. The attempt to cut off the flow of funds to protesting truckers is an overreach. Now make no mistake, he is not exactly on the side of truckers either. Buterin, who grew up in Canada, does not approve of the freedom convoys that have been blaring their homes in Ottawa for the last week in opposition to the COVID-19 restrictions. He said, quote, If the truckers are blocking the roads and that's breaking the economy, fine. Blocking the roads is illegal and there are laws against that. That said, He said the government was heavy-handed in its approach. He also mentioned that cryptocurrency is really a way to put a check on that overreach. He said, quote, If the government is not willing to follow the laws and give people a chance to defend themselves, and they just want to talk to the banks and basically cut out people's financial livelihoods without due process, that is an example of the sort of thing that decentralized technology is there to make more difficult. He said, it's not about being lawless. In some ways, it's about bringing rule of law back. And I get his point. You can have laws and government and police exercising their legal authority without involving the bankers. They can pursue their subjects, quote, just as they always have, without bringing the financial middlemen into it. And he said, quote, this concept of going after intermediaries and using intermediaries to buy all, pass all that, is dangerous. Having decentralized alternatives to an intermediary is a good way to limit the damage. This week, after protests started breaking up, 
Trudeau invoked the powers of the Emergencies Act. They declared banks and other financial service providers were authorized to freeze or suspend accounts associated with the truck convoy. They could do this of their own choice and volition, and they could do it without a court order. Oh, and they were protected from any legal civil liability for having done so. Truckers decided this didn't really work for them, and they're going to go around it using crypto donations. So that got the Canadian government blacklisting a number of crypto addresses that are suspected of being involved with a convoy. And now, the latest is that a court injunction ordered against the funds to be frozen? That's until a class action lawsuit is worked out. They've ordered it. I don't know how well that's going to work out. But that's what Buterin was talking about. Crypto's nature makes it very hard for the government to do exactly what it's attempting to do right now. Phishing attack causes grief for OpenSea. 1.7 million in ETH. That's how much has been stolen from OpenSea's customers. Now, it's not a direct steal. It's in NFTs, but that's the value that's been stolen from them. Peck Shield is a blockchain security company. According to them, there's a phishing attack that's already resulted in countless stolen NFTs. It's a clever plan, as you'll see. OpenSea has since said that it was investigating the rumors and it has nothing to do with the website. So here's what happened. Rumors started flying that people were seeing what has been characterized as, quote, unsettling behavior in their accounts. About that time, Peck Shield tweeted out the following, quote, Though unconfirmed, the OpenSea hack is most likely phishing. Users authorize migration, as instructed in the phishing email, and the authorization unfortunately allows the hacker to steal the valuable NFTs. Keep in mind, this is happening during the backdrop of a planned OpenSea upgrade. OpenSea announced their new smart contract upgrade with a one-week deadline just yesterday. And part of that upgrade requires the users to migrate their listed NFTs from Ethereum blockchain to a new smart contract. But what this did was open up a period of vulnerability because within hours, OpenSea's announcement, after that multiple sources reporting an ongoing attack that targets the soon to be delisted NFTs. So that's what happened. Attackers used phishing emails to steal the NFTs. They used this whole legitimate OpenSea migration process they use that as a disguise because once the user authorizes the NFT migration, once they click on that link from that fraudulent email, then the users lose their access to their NFTs and the attackers gain it. OpenSea co-founder and CEO Devin Finzer confirmed the phishing attack. He also confirmed that 32 users have lost NFTs so far. And really, does it need to be said again, folks? Stop clicking on links in your email. I don't give you financial advice, but as an IT professional, I will give you IT advice. This is my official advice. Stop clicking on the stupid links. The attack is still going on. That's the thing about these phishing attacks. It's really tough to completely shut them down. And they haven't been pinned down to you know as far as how they got the intel of what emails to send you know, who to send it to. Peck Shield did say, though, that they thought that there was a leak of user email, of user info, and that would explain how they sent out the emails that fueled the ongoing attack. To that end, Finzer said, quote, If you are concerned and want to protect yourself, you can unapprove access to your NFT collection. And folks, that's exactly what I would consider doing if I were in your position. If I had some potentially compromisable NFTs, I would certainly unapprove access. Wait till the open season migration over, put it back up. That's just my opinion. And so that's it for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Do you have thoughts or questions about the show? Reach out and let us know. Send us an email at crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. That's crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. You can also find us on Torum and on Twitter. Links to those platforms will be in the show notes. And please, if you could, like, subscribe, share, comment, and review the podcast. 
Also, if you're listening on Spotify, they did add in a feature that will let you rate right from the app. So give us a five-star rating. It would really help Tex and I out, and it would also help others find this content. And with that, may all your investments go up and to the right.